The fight between Tom Gale and me looked deadly serious. Really, it wasn't. Everything was well rehearsed. The knives were made of rubber. The fight was part of a movie stunt, something both of us were well trained for. I didn't know then that before long, Tom Gale and I would be involved in something more deadly and a thousand times more dangerous. Movie stuntman Tom Gale and I had finished our job. I was collecting my equipment when Tom suddenly turned to me. Mike, how would you rate me as a diver? Are you serious? Yeah. How would you rate me? Oh, you're very good. Then you'd be willing to work with me again? Ah, uh, anytime. Yeah, you got what it takes. You got a lot of guts, but at the same time, you, you don't take any foolish chances. Oh, you got another job lined up? Not right now. I'll let you know if anything turns up. See ya. It was obvious that something was cooking in his head. Something that had to do with me. A couple of days later, I found out what it was, but not from Tom. Tom was going to try for the deep diving record. What's more, he expected me to help him. This was something that I had to straighten out fast. Hi, Mike. Welcome aboard. Want to explain this to me? I figured you'd be surprised. I didn't give you permission to use my name. Well, don't get sore. I tried to reach you all day yesterday, but you were out. Well, this is out, too. Call the papers and tell them that. Why? Just the other day, you said you'd be glad to work with me. Not for a stunt like this. Now, Mr. Nelson, just one second, please. Now, this is a worthwhile project. I suggest you take it seriously. This is my father, Buster Gale. Well, if you're his father, I suggest that you pound some sense into his head. I never tell him what to do. He's his own man. He wants this record, and I'm here to help. What do you expect to gain by this? Well, I'm a diver. I want to build up my reputation. Believe me, it's not worth the risk. Risk? Why, the Gale family thrives on risk. Maybe you don't remember, but I was Olympic high diving champion. Three times running. This boy's a chip off the old block. Well, no offense, Mr. Gale, but fancy diving is quite different than deep sea diving. Tell him what it's like 300 feet down, huh? And tell him how many men have lost their lives trying to break that record. How many? Over 200. A lot of those guys didn't have the right equipment. And they didn't have you to help. Well, you haven't got me either. Now, let's get that straight. Well, you get this straight, Nelson. If he hasn't got you, he's got me. I'll plan the operation for this boy. I'll get him in condition. I'll make sure if he wants this record, he gets it. And believe you me, when a Gale wants something, he does get it. Hi, honey. This is Mike Nelson. It's my wife, Mike. Hello. I'm so happy to meet you. My husband's always talking about you. Are you going to help him? No. He's not. But you say he's done so much to promote skin diving. Promote it, yes. But damage it with a foolhardy stunt like this? Uh-uh. This is a job for the real pros, for the Navy. It's got the equipment, the skill, and it wouldn't be just a publicity stunt. I'm sorry, Mrs. Gale. You call the paper about that, Tom. Don't worry, boy. The old man will take care of everything. Mr. Nelson. Mr. Nelson, uh, I... Mike's the name. Mike, please talk to me a minute. Okay, sure. It's very dangerous, isn't it? Yes, it is, very. Can't you talk him out of it? I tried. Can't you? I can't fight both of them. Yeah. His father wants that record real bad. Even if it costs his son his life. You can't let it happen, Mike. You just can't let it happen. How can I stop it? I don't know, but you, you can't let Tom kill himself. Please, Mike, please. I had to stop Tom Gale from killing himself. For personal reasons, and for the danger that it would do skin diving in general. The only way that I could do it was to see that his attempt at the record was painstakingly planned. So, reluctantly, I agreed to supervise the planning. 
but to take no part myself in the attempt. First, I insisted that Dr. Hugh Benedict, who had been working with divers for 20 years, be brought in to keep constant tab on Tom's physical condition. He put him on a special vitamin diet to fortify him. We got hold of a portable decompression chamber, an absolute must in the event anything went wrong underwater. We worked out a mixture of helium and oxygen. Object to eliminate nitrogen from his breathing. Bus rounded up a couple of divers to serve as relay men. Part of the job would be to lash extra air tanks to the cable at each decompression level, so that as Tom returned toward the surface, he'd have fresh supplies of the proper mixtures. They'd also be available for emergencies, if any. Nice, huh? 327. I took Tom and the relay men below to test the diving lungs. I showed them the best way to lash the extra air tanks in place. We were 200 feet down in the ocean under terrific pressure, beyond the limits of most divers. Suddenly, one of the relay men was in trouble. He grabbed a spare lung. He was starting to surface, but without proper decompression. A fatal mistake at a depth where there is no margin for error. I swam to his side, helped him with the extra tank. I checked his valve, but couldn't find anything wrong. He had obviously panicked. You know better to swim up fast like that. What's the matter with you? You want to kill yourself? Something wrong with my regulator. Couldn't seem to get any air. There's nothing wrong with your regulator. That's funny. I could have sworn it was stuck. Charlie's got to go. Why? He spooks at the slightest thing down there. What are you giving us? He's been skin diving since he was a kid. <laughs> yeah, and that might be. But there was nothing wrong with his regular. If there was anything wrong, it's Charlie. Look, Mike. Charlie's father is Bill O'Neill, the movie producer. Now we're trying to promote a picture deal. Promote whatever you want. But let's get rid of Charlie, huh? <laughs> At 10 o'clock the next morning, extra diving lungs were lashed in place at each decompression level. On the surface, it was like a county fair. Tom posed for the news photographers with the official judge, Lieutenant Dan Taylor of the Navy's Underwater Demolition Reserve. Dr. Benedict gave Tom his final physical check. I played doctor to the equipment, inspecting everything from the decompression chamber to the smallest belt buckle in the diving lungs. The relay men returned to the barge and reported that the extra air tanks were in place. Everything was in order. It's going to be a beautiful day. How many does that make you? You got eight? Okay, we have the eight complete tanks down. Little friend here got the last two for me. Yeah. Here you That's good. Well, get some tanks. Get some tanks. Get some tanks.
Hiya, Mike. Sorry. About what? Buzz told me to be here by nine, but man, was it rugged getting up this morning. I thought I told you to get rid of Charlie. Now relax, Mike. I want him in on this. It'll put us in good with his old man. Not if he drowns himself. He won't. I made a promise not to go below 50 feet. He can take a few pictures of something down there while you're decompressing. Easy. What's the matter? Shoulder's a little stiff, just nerves. Down there, a shoulder cramp can be fatal. Nelson, you've been dragging your feet the whole way, trying to make trouble at every turn. I'm trying to stop trouble. That's why I'm here. I think you're here to stop Tom from breaking the record. What? You heard me. You're jealous. Because you haven't got the guts or drive to try for it yourself. Well, he hasn't got the drive either. You're the one with that. Now, wait a minute, Mike. Don't deny it. He pushed you into this. He wants that record. You don't know what you're talking about. No. Why you suppose your shoulders all knotted up? You're scared, that's why. You want out. Yeah. Well, you sound like the one who wants out. Charlie! Charlie O'Neill! Get a helium ring. The bus said I was only going down to 50 feet. You're going 200 feet. You're going to be safety man. Well, come on, I haven't got all morning. Don't let him do it. I told you once before. When a Gale wants something, he gets it. You just stay out of the way. At 11 o'clock, Tom Gale was ready to dive 380 feet into the ocean. Deeper than any other skin diver had ever gone before. We were anchored over a 400-foot trench, chosen because there were no underwater currents. I had a dozen reasons to doubt that he'd make it, and a dozen more to worry about his safety. Honey, maybe Mike is right. Forget about Mike. Folks, when they haul up this cable after my dive, you'll find my wife's scarf tied below the 375-foot mark. Let's go. I was against the whole deal. Tom was being a fool, so was his father. But I couldn't just stay on the sidelines and wait for Tom to drown himself. While I was putting on my diving lung, Tom and O'Neill were approaching the 50-foot level. O'Neill was having trouble with his ears. Tom waited while he tried to clear them. At the 100-foot level, O'Neill was still having trouble with his ears. He could hardly bear the pain, but he was afraid to keep Tom waiting any longer. I managed to clear my ears at once. I was able to overtake them at 140 feet. I tried to get Tom to surface and give up the attempt. When he refused, I had to send O'Neill back to the surface, and I headed down to take his place. Meanwhile, on the surface, it was time for the two safety men to swim down and wait for us at the first decompression level. Underwater, Tom reached the 250-foot mark and paused to wait for me. I 
I was to maintain a station there for the four minutes we had scheduled for him to dive to the record depth. He was to tie his wife's scarf to the cable and return to me. It was too dark to see what was happening below. The only noise I could hear was our bubbles. And there ought to be a signal in a minute or two. What kind? Well, if Tom breaks the record, he'll release a white ball. If he doesn't, but he's safe, a green one. And if he's not safe? Well, let's not worry about that. Suddenly I realized it was unusually cold. Tom was diving into a thermocline, the body of cold water deep in the ocean trench, at a temperature that could freeze the marrow on a man's bones. Down below, Tom made a supreme effort and reached his goal. He should have been thinking of the time and temperature. Instead, his mind was on publicity. Numbed by cold and slowed by the pressure, he started making mistakes. He tried to tie the scarf to the cable, but his gloved fingers were too awkward. Even without the gloves, his cold hands were clumsy and already so stiff that he foolishly let the gloves get away from him. Tom had been gone longer than the agreed time. I didn't know where he was or what had happened. I had no other choice but to go down for him. I released a marker ball to warn the men above. Groggy as he was, he realized that he had to go up. So he started upward, leaving the knot only half tied. It's red. That's trouble, isn't it? Yeah. Tom agonizingly made his way back to the 320-foot mark. By the time we reached the 140 foot mark, our first decompression level, Tom was exhausted. His hands were so stiff he could hardly hold on to the cable. My own head felt light and my body heavy. I turned Tom over to the relay men. It was their job to give him a new mixture of gases to breathe. It was my job to figure out how long he'd have to decompress now. Originally, the total time of decompression had been estimated at one hour and 42 minutes. But Tom had remained below almost two extra minutes. That meant that his decompression would have to be extended to almost three hours. It was impossible to keep him down that long. He was too exhausted. There was only one thing to do, send him to the decompression chamber on the surface. chamber could handle only one man. That left me out and down. I had to decompress in the water. I checked my decompression chart. The news was bad. It would take me a total of 73 minutes to stay down in order to come up without the bends. In the meantime, Tom was placed in the decompression chamber. Time passed slowly in the icy waters, but finally it was over and I could surface. How do you feel, Mike? Oh. A little rough down there, huh? 
Any hey. pains in the joints? <sighs> How is he? How's Tom? Hard to say till he comes out. Warmed up. Well, he did it, Mike. Broke the record. Tied Sandra Scarf at the 380 foot level. Congratulations. How much longer has he got to go? About 10 minutes. Hi, Tom. How do you feel it? I... I feel great. Just a little... Well, was it worth it? You'll be okay. In the meantime, the official observers began to haul up the cable to verify whether the world record was better. The scarf would be the proof. The moment when a man comes out of decompression is always rough. No matter how good his condition seems, there can be serious shock, even heart failure. Put his head in the blanket, huh? Would you like some water? Right there. Will he be all right? He'll need a week in the hospital. How do you feel? Awful. But I did it. I broke the record. Sure you did, son. Hey, Lieutenant. How about it? What's the exact measurement? I'm sorry there isn't any. The scarf wasn't on the cable. What? What do you mean? I tied it there. I know I did. Must have slipped off. And the whole thing was wasted? I'm sorry, Dan. But I'll make it up. As soon as I get out of the hospital, I'll go down and I'll get that record. I promise. You've got nothing to be sorry for. Oh, yes, I have. I muffed it. After all the work you did, I muffed it. Don't talk about the work I did. That's what's been wrong with the whole deal, the work I did. I'm the one that should be sorry, Tom. I pushed you, I nagged you, I drove you until you almost killed yourself just so I could have the glory. Damn. Another record for the Gale family. Some more clippings in a scrapbook. Big deal. Well, that's all over with, boy. Don't ever try it for me again. I've lost you up enough already. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Come on. Let's get him to the hospital. All right, hoist that anchor. We're shoving off. Us. Nice work. Thanks. Be back next week at this same time with another sea hunt story. Plan to be with us again, huh?